take the rune if you dare. Okay, I'm 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 exaggerating a little, but only a little. Hello, my fellow uh, slayers of demons. Uh, it's time, well, very soon for season three, season of the construct. And now that we have had its full reveal, there's a lot to look forward to. Actually, more than I expected, and I had a kind of worry, a fear that with how good season two was, especially relative to the bar set by season one, and by bar set, I mean the bar was literally laying on the floor, I thought, Ugh, are we gonna have like just a series of hit and miss seasons and uh, after all the good work season two has done to slowly build the game back up, are we in danger of just slipping back down? Well, it doesn't seem like it. There's certainly some mixed opinions out there, but so far, generally, what I've seen is positive, and I can certainly see why, and I would definitely count myself amongst the, ooh, this looks like it actually might be a little bit of fun, and that's really cool, especially, you know, back to back after season two, which certainly was, for all of its still flaws that it has, uber uniques need addressing in how they're required, there's a lot of gear issues in how that's going to be acquired, and Indeed, that has been addressed. Getting 925s from uh, tier 90 plus Nightmare Dungeons makes them a fantastic source of gear, so we don't just need to camp on Duriel's face. So that's a really positive change, as technically is the stash tab change. Though, that said, it just means slightly longer till you get completely full, but I do think it is a uh, patchwork fix until Season 4, when they hopefully finally get in all legendaries going into the Codex, which is something they've said they want to do, alongside a big gear change to uh, the fundamental itemization of the game also happening in Season 4. I think Season 4 is going to be quite big, which is another reason I was worried about Season 3, is it's kind of like the bridge gap season, but it doesn't look like they've held anything back, and that's really cool to see. I think, honestly, the star of the show right now is the quality of life changes that are coming. Helltide being permanently up with only five minute breaks is a real, hey, we listened, you can have it, and it's like, oh, fantastic. There's no reason it shouldn't ever have been like that, but it's really cool that that's happening. Supposedly, we're getting new density in Helltides 2, even more so than there currently is, which again is great because farming Helltides, especially now that the Vampiric Zone showed them up, felt a little bit... Ugh. And if we're going to have that happen again with uh, the uh, new Season 3, essentially, overworld equivalent in the form of Arcane Tremors, you just can't have the seasonal overworld mechanic constantly make the base game stuff look bad. So hopefully Helltide's being constantly up and having more density will make them a very valuable place to be instead of just a, oh, I need forgotten souls or I need steel. I guess I've got to go to Helltide, which they kind of turned into a little bit chore-like. So that's good to see addressed too. There was an interview with the devs that revealed a little bit more information as well. We know the amount of uniques that we're getting is six, so again, I assume one per class and then an all-round, which is seemingly going to just be quite a consistent thing, which makes sense because uniques are supposedly build-defining, so one build-defining new item per season per class, it's going to keep adding up over time, and I can see that being a nice, solid way to do it. And back on the quality of life, even the ability to respec without committing the gold and the points yet, so you can just plan out the tree and then just lock it in when you're happy, is really heartening. And a lot of this stuff, again, is uh, things that really should always have been there, just like we should have loadouts for build swapping, which I am a little bit sad to not see anything about at this point, given, obviously, what we do here on the channel. We swap builds a lot, and it is painful, but I will still try my best to push sorcerers to their maximum this season, and I am actually quite excited to do that for a couple reasons. I'm going to wait to talk about sorcerer properly till after the class changes are revealed on Thursday, but do look out for that. The robot options are quite exciting on that front. 
But before we get lost in said robot options, I think it's important to focus on the quality of life changes, which you might think that's a lot less exciting than, you know, the seasonal mechanics, because the quality of life improvements over time is what will make Diablo 4 a good game. It's not flashy seasonal mechanics that will disappear that, yes, were fun, but lasting, solid, incremental improvements to the game is what's needed, and it will reach critical mass. So that is very, very nice to see. And the season specifically then, I mean, getting a new little, like, hub towny area, gate hall with its own vendors and portals to go places, that's really good. Like, that's a little bit more than I was expecting. Vaults, the new dungeon, look like they're going to be fun. A very risk-reward, you can bet on how well you're going to do to make it harder to get uh, more goodies at the end. I like the focus they're placing on traps and avoiding obstacles and thinking about where you're running more than just mindlessly slaughtering enemies. I'm sure there'll be lots of that too, but it does feel like they have learnt from Abattoir of Zer and its problems. There needs to be more than just numbers and enemies enemies to make a satisfying challenge in the long run, and this big emphasis on avoiding uh, the uh, laying in wait to traps and devices is a nice way to do that. The fact that you can have nightmare versions of them once you get to World Tier 3 and beyond to run alongside actual nightmare dungeons is also really good. I am hoping that high nightmare vaults will be another source of uber unique chance, because that's going to be just another problem again with Duriel Farm in the season. We're getting another boss, of course, but whether he will be a uber boss or just a regular boss is a another thing entirely. I have a feeling that Malthus will be just his some more uniques. Perhaps he will just have all the new ones as his loot pool, which would make sense, but we do need the uber unique situation addressed, which is the kind of quality of life stuff that is so important to keep improving. There needs to be a pity timer. There needs to be uh, bad luck protection against getting the same one five times in a row, but I suppose one step at a time. Having this underground sprawling mechanical monstrosity theme is, yeah, definitely nice, and honestly, I really like that for a season, the gimmick is going to be powering up a companion, not your character specifically. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, the uh, little robot friend you're going to have does do things for you, your character. For Sorceress, for example, he does poison damage, which is great for Talrash's ring, so hopefully that does work out. But shielding you and supporting you and buffing you is certainly on the cards, but having him also pump out damage in the way that you have set him up with a version of the skill rune system, like we saw in Diablo 3, is really good. I think it's fun to not have, at least for one season, an extra layer of complication or RNG on the gear that you're equipping, like malignant heart slots, like packs in Season 2. I think actually having this little guy doing his thing and working out the best two moves to give him and the best six ways to augment those moves is going to be very satisfying when playing with your character. He might actually enable skills by his both offensive and defensive contribution that we previously couldn't use. Whether he will work with other, like, necro or druid minion enhancing effects I'm not sure it would be unfair to the three classes if he did. I am hoping that this robot means that they are going to improve companion AI in general, because that's something that they generally need to do, but I am definitely digging having a powerful little buddy that's going to scale with us, and he can't die either, so he just gets to exist and be there. He, the more power your character has, the more power he has, he's never going to fall off or feel weak, supposedly, at least according to the devs, and then we get these new mechanical monstrosity bosses at the end of vaults, like the uh, ridiculous looking metal scorpion, and I'm kind of there when it comes to the theme. I prefer it to vampires, certainly. And that's all of just the launch stuff, knowing that we're then going to get the gauntlet dungeons for level 100 characters with the leaderboards later in the season, essentially a pre-announced Abattoir of Zero, etc. pinnacle endgame challenge is great too, because it means there is a reason to really go for it, get to level 100, power up your character, in preparation for whenever that does arrive. Now, I realize I'm saying all of this before the class changes are announced, well, tomorrow. If we get another, well, you know, that situation, 
then all of this is kind of for naught because it's going to completely ruin everybody's excitement. But if we get some actually well thought out, delicate changes, and yes, I do think some nerfs are still a good idea. I think the overall power level of the game is too all over the place, but I am cautiously optimistic when it comes to what they'll do. Basically, I just kind of wanted to sit and talk about the season and how I'm feeling going into it. The bottom line is, I like the theme. There is seemingly much more content than I expected there to be. I think uh, the gimmick mechanic that adds our power, but not directly onto our character this time, is certainly nice. And more than anything, I love the cavalcade of quality of life that shows no signs of stopping because we know in Season 4 we're going to get an overhaul to gear and itemization, which is absolutely huge. I do definitely think the future of Diablo 4 is a lot brighter than it used to look, and I think, you know, give it six months and we're gonna have a really, really solid ARPG. And it needs to be to compete with the likes of Last Epoch and Path of Exile 2. So we should see quite an interesting year for us uh, fans of this genre. I uh, then want to go into this with hope. I want to have fun, and uh, we will, of course, be with you every step of the way. I would love to know your thoughts on it so far, and I think all I can do is expect good things, because Season 2, for the most part, was a good thing. We'll see if that actually holds out. But yes, definitely let me know what your thoughts on the season are from just what we know so far. This is kind of like a, a pre-review, a prediction, if you will. And until next time, subscribe, hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh, goodbye.